System76 make a lot of great machines, and I've even taken a look at their Gazelle gaming laptop for my first video on the channel, which you can check out in the top corner over there. You gotta get the plugs in. But anyways, if you don't want or need such a heavy hitter and really just want something that's a portable thin and light laptop that looks great, they have this bad boy right here. The Galago Pro laptop, which personally, I really love. You smell that? It smells like a bit goblin. So first, I think I should put up a disclaimer that, yes, this is the old model of the Galago Pro, and in fact, they have a new model that kind of touches on some of the bad spots of this machine. There are three main differences that I can tell between the models. Firstly, most importantly, the new model has the option for a dedicated GPU, which will allow you to do some light gaming on your thin and light laptop, which this one did not have the option for. It's only a GTX 1650, but it's still much better than the Intel integrated graphics. Two, they no longer have the 13 inch high DPI display option, which is what I have right here. And I have a theory as to why they dropped it, but I will go over that later as it is a gripe I have with this system. And three, there are some minor aesthetic changes. Instead of an all aluminum silver body, the new one has this black bottom cover. It's not a bad look in my opinion, but if you really like your MacBook lookalikes, then this one will kind of break that immersion for you. And it also seems like the new model has some more flatter edges, while this one has more of a curved kind of feel to it. But anyways, let's look at the laptop that I have right here. Like I said, it's got an aluminum body that looks pretty clean. It's very slim, which I love in a laptop meant for more portable duties, especially since it only weighs about three pounds. And looking at the bottom, it looks like all you have to do is unscrew what seems like 11 screws just to get to the hardware inside of this. And I'm not going to open this now because I'm lazy, but System76 are pretty good about making their machines user serviceable, even if it is a little bit tedious at times. Overall, the build quality feels pretty good. There doesn't seem to be a whole lot of flex uh, when you're opening or closing, or even when you're typing. And speaking of opening on the laptop, Upon opening, you're greeted with some super thick bezels, which remind me of like a 2009 MacBook with the webcam up here that is uh, pretty ugly. It almost looks like there's a piece of tape across the top, which is... Ugh. Moving on to the keyboard, it feels pretty good in my opinion. It has some has a very typical chiclet style membrane keys, but they're very sharp is the best way I can put it. Like they're not super responsive or tactile like mechanical keys could be. And bottoming out on the keys is a little mushy, but the keys do feel very responsive for membrane keys and don't take a whole lot of force to press. Key stabilization seems all right, and there's virtually no deck flex unless you press like really hard, which I wouldn't think is reasonable to expect anyway, unless you buy your laptops just to smash on them like the Hulk or something, you know. The trackpad is all right, I guess. It's a little small by today's standards. I mean, yeah, that's just kind of tiny. And the tracking area feels a little bit rough and textured, like the rest of the chassis. They really could have used like a glossy finish or something to make it a bit nicer to use, like they did on their Gazelle laptop, which I thought was a pretty good trackpad in my opinion. As for the mouse keys, they are alright. Again, it's a little small if you can see that. And I personally would have preferred two separate keys, but you know, this isn't really that bad. That's all just a personal preference. As for the hardware featured on this system, it has an Intel Core i5-8265U quad-core processor with a base clock of 1.6 GHz that can turbo up to 3.9 GHz. Two 8GB sticks of RAM for a total of 16GB of dual-channel RAM running at 2400 MHz. A 500GB NVMe SSD, which I found is the right storage size for my machines. And it also has another storage drive slot, which I think is M.2, if you want to add more storage. This is also the 13-inch model with a high DPI 3200 by 1800 pixel display. And really, that's it for the hardware inside. It's nothing special, but it's really not that shabby. Pretty good uh, thin and light, if I may say so myself. Now, the cunning among you, or at least if you paid attention earlier, which, who knows, may have noticed that I didn't mention a dedicated GPU. And that's because this just doesn't have one, which really hurts the gaming performance of the laptop. This really is more positioned as a high battery life machine for like business applications, general browsing, or for like schoolwork or something. Not really at gaming. And to be fair, 
having a dedicated GPU would eat at the battery life pretty badly. Again, it's not a bad choice, and you can even get a dedicated GPU in the new model if that's what you want. You just need to make the call for yourself if that's what you need or if you just want more battery life or whatever. Moving on, as for the I.O. on the machine, on the left side from back to front, you have your power jack, a SIM card slot if you're traveling and have a data plan, a full-size USB 3.1 Type-A port, the power button in a curious position in the middle, and your typical microphone and headphone jacks. On the right side, however, you have a collapsible gigabit Ethernet jack. Awesome. An SD card slot, a full-size HDMI port, mini display port, and USB 3.1 Type-C and Type-A ports. While it was a mouthful to read off to you, I love the diverse selection of I.O. present on this machine, which makes it a very capable business-suited laptop. I cannot stress this enough. Laptops need more connectivity than just USB-C or Thunderbolt. Yes, you can have all the dongles you want off of those ports, but it's super annoying just having to carry around all the dongles like, oh, do I have this mini display pro one? Do I have HDMI? Do I have Ethernet? Blah, blah, blah. Especially if you just need like an Ethernet port to work on network hardware that you must hardwire into to manage. And even sometimes I've seen some of the more locked down laptops used in my work not even allow USB network devices, which to be fair, is good for security measures if you don't necessarily trust your users, but does still make things annoying for us admins that run into, the, into these issues. Moving on to the software side of things, this machine by default comes with System76's Pop OS, or Ubuntu if you prefer that, but come on. There really isn't a whole lot to say here, beyond I've noticed a weird battery life improvement on Pop OS compared to other Linux distributions, including Ubuntu and Linux Mint. I'm not sure exactly what causes it, as I run basically the same setup on any Linux distribution that I use by installing and enabling TLP and some other minor tweaks to the screen brightness, but maybe I just missed something or did something wrong. So your mileage may vary on that one. Also, I really love the integration that Pop! OS provides with System76's hardware, and even some hardware beyond that. Firmware updates get pushed out through System76's updater for the laptop, and even my Logitech mouse, of all things, gets updates too. And it's actually pretty friggin' seamless to keep your firmware updated, especially compared to some laptops, which, again, from work, I've seen it can be quite a pain to patch the firmware, even in some instances with some major bugs like the Spectre Meltdown fiasco a couple years ago. Also, one other neat thing about Pop! OS is if you get the new model with the 1650, Pop has a neat little GPU switcher thing that lets you switch between integrated only, dedicated only, or a kind of hybrid mode that kind of replaces the NVIDIA Bumblebee Switch graphics stuff so you can run the dedicated GPU only for games and otherwise run the integrated GPU to save battery life. It's small touches like this that are done by default in Pop! OS that makes it a great experience for me for my daily drivers. Though I will say that it isn't all sunshine and daisies. Since this has a high DPI display, and I really wish I sprung for the 1080p display, it's important that whatever OS you do choose does a decent job of handling display and application scaling. And Pop! OS does do a decent, but not great job with that. This is getting better as the Wayland Display Server gets better and is more supported, but for a while I almost had to run Pop! OS since display scaling on X11 takes a lot of extra tweaking and Pop! OS just kind of took care of that for me. Otherwise, display scaling is really hit or miss in applications, and I've even noticed that running application with Flatpaks doesn't do too well with it. I'm not sure if it's Flatpak itself or the application runtimes that just don't check for display scaling variables or whatever, but Wayland has been better in this regard, and thankfully, you won't have to worry about this on the new model since they don't have the high DPI display option. Though, I will have to say that this is more of a Linux issue and not a System76 or Pop! OS issue specifically, so, so take that for what you will. And really, I think that's all I have to say about for the software. Though, I haven't run Windows on this machine since, like, why would I? But it should run fine if you want to, you'll just have to install it yourself. Also, I plan on doing a deeper dive video on Pop! OS soon, so keep an eye out for that by subscribing to my channel. So I guess now is the time for benchmarks. 
while I did load up some of the benchmarking ga suite of games and even run a couple of them, I'm not going to run through the gaming benchmarks since this really just can't keep up for games. Even in Bioshock Infinite, an older game at this point, at low settings I was still getting around like something stupid low like 15-20 FPS, which just isn't playable. If you want to play old school RuneScape like I do, then you're golden. But that's about as good of a gaming endorsement that I can give it. Anything even lightly graphically intensive will bring this laptop to its knees. As for productivity stuff, however, this can be a somewhat useful productivity machine with a since it has a quad-core A-thread CPU and 16 gig gigabytes of RAM. I'm going to run through the same gauntlet of tests provided by the Pharonix test suite that I used on the System76 Gazelle video, although the Inkscape test just keeps straight up just not launching for some reason. But anyway, here we go. So, looking at the benchmarks and knowing what we know about this laptop already, honestly, this is a this is a pretty capable laptop for a lot of things, even if gaming is not one of those things. The workstation benchmarks that I ran on this thing actually turned out pretty well, and it still looked really good on the power saving performance setting, which is what I normally keep this on just because, you know, battery life. This is a somewhat decent machine that can do some lighter image editing, very light video editing and transcoding if you need to do it on the road. You damn it. As long as a task doesn't require a GPU to work, or even just for optimal performance, you can get by with this if you need to. Like if you're on the road and need to pop out a quick video in 1080p, or cook up some dope memes. It could even hold up well enough for software development in some smaller projects. Moving off of the workstation tasks and into more general usage like web browsing, email, all that fun stuff that virtually everyone does, this thing still holds up very well. The MVME storage lets applications start up almost instantly. Even the OS startup takes a very short amount of time to get going. Although for me, there is a little bit of a small hiccup after the OS is loaded, but before the login screen starts up. I'm not sure exactly what that is, but I have a feeling it might be something with like mounting file shares or something along those lines. So you may not notice that in your experience. And really, everything just kind of feels snappy. And that even includes the Flatback applications I use, which tend to take a hot second longer than native apps. I also very rarely, if ever, feel like I need more RAM with the 16 gigabytes that I outfitted this with. And if this is all you're using it for, you, you can probably save a little bit by lowering the storage on the boot drive, or maybe even lowering to 8 gigabytes of RAM. All that said, Really, if you're not looking for a gaming rig or even a 8 or 4K video editing rig, this laptop should cover most use cases. And even the current model of this thing, like I've mentioned a few times, has the option for a GPU that will cover like gaming needs, and even some of the medium weight stuff if you're not super gung-ho about high FPS. It's light enough, it looks great, and with the SSD for the OS and boot drive and good enough processors, it's snappy enough to handle most use cases and even some lighter workstation-y tasks. It's a little expensive, this model running for around $1,200 US before taxes and shipping, but in my opinion is definitely well worth it if you have the money. And that's all I have for this one. Let me know if you liked it or disliked it by hitting the buttons below, or leave a comment if you feel like I should keep doing more of these laptop reviews. Subscribe to my channel to keep up with the latest BitGoblin videos. And go join my brand new Discord server that I created over the weekend. It's not quite fully fleshed out yet, but it's getting there. And either way, I will catch you in the next one.